episode of The Paisley Show. Yeah! Strap on your boots and saddle up because this week's episode is the very first Queer Country Roundup. <laughs> I've been a part of the queer country community for several years now and it's given me the chance to meet so many amazing musicians and perform all around the country. One of the reasons that the queer country community exists is because of the Queer Country Monthly, which was started by our very first guest, Karen Pittleman from Karen and the Silent Hill. She's also a fellow tour mate, collaborator, and my dear friend, the one and only Mia Byrne is talking about. We've got a great show for you, so sit back and enjoy the show. It was a Friday night and the sun was just going down. She's done so many incredible things that it's impossible to name them all, but I'm going to try to hit a few. Her latest record, Guaranteed Broken Heart, is so good I've had it on repeat, but I'm not the only one impressed by her music and songwriting abilities. Rolling Stone, Billboard, Vice, No Depression, and more have sung her praises. She's an incredible performer and songwriter, a published author, a concert producer, a social justice activist. I don't know what she doesn't do. It's been my honor to share many stages with her and I hope to share many more. Please welcome Karen Pittleman. The variety show in my high school was a big, big deal. 
Mm. So I was always like all about that. What is your favorite memory from that? Um, probably, I really, this is so embarrassing. I'm not going to leave this in here, but <laughs> probably like show choir. <laughs> what was like, show choir? I was super into show choir. I don't even know what that is. Oh, really? Oh, girl. It's like a, it's a Midwest thing. It's dan like, you get, it's basically like choir, but mm -hmm. everybody wears matching sequin outfits and does choreographed dances. I, you have to leave this in. This is important <laughs> for everybody to know about. That's I mean, amazing. I'm just curious what it was like growing <laughs> up in New York. I mean, I know you don't really have a point of reference to like what it would not be like, but can you sum that up? <laughs> it's, it's foreign to me. I mean, I think if I had just had a little bit better timing it would have been easier for me like the first gay straight alliance in my school happened the year after I graduated like while I was there nobody had ever come out and like I knew I knew like from third grade that you know but I was I knew it was bi too so I was like I'll just keep this other part of me yeah <laughs> quiet but like I definitely knew and I definitely remember like trying to perform being straight a lot like especially at sleepaway camp which I went to like all girls sleepaway camp and I could tell like every once in a while I could tell it was like crossing the line and then I would try really hard to show just how much I love boys like I remember like ripping out an ad for Hawaiian Tropic with this really like giant muscly man, which like the, I don't even, I don't like that at all. Like, whatever boys I do like, and like putting it above my cubby and being like, yeah, look at that, you know? <laughs> so like, there was a lot of that. And it's like, I mean, it was New York City in the nineties, there's a million cool things going on, but I was just like super like, good girl like only thing I was ever trying to do is like study and please my parents so like no rebellion I, I never went anywhere or did anything outside of school and my school was this like very intense like conservative prep school um so like until I got to college my world was just really small even though I was in New York City where it could have been so much more expansive. <laughs> These intensely queer traditions in country music that aren't thought of as such but like you know, it just always blows my mind anytime you would get this thing of like, oh, well, you're like too campy, so that's not gay. It's like, I mean, so that's not gay. It's gay, but this, so that's not country. Yeah. Like, that blows my mind because it's like, do you know anything about country music? Have like, you <laughs> yeah, have you watched Sheehaw? Have you seen a nudie suit? Have you ever seen Porter Wagner show? Like, what are you talking about? Like, country is so camp like country is gayer than any other musical genre and like proud of it proud of it you know and like it really bothers me that people can't see that you are in this really venerable like long-standing country tradition you know pisses me off yeah. <laughs> me too yeah. And the same with the variety show when you think of like all of the country variety shows like those also super campy. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just dripping with rhinestones and, and camel. So like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you don't have to pretend to be George Strait to, you know, fit yeah. into country music. far away.
love of me Some people you can love up close Some people from afar tour in California and we became fast friends. We played shows together all around the country. We've written several songs together, including Stay Away From My Man, which appears on our new record, Electric Park Ballroom. Mia is an accomplished musician, songwriter, and performer, having received high praise from major media outlets. She performed solo and in several bands, including The Ramblers, Lavender Country, and The Homobiles. I am so thrilled to have her here today. Please welcome Mia Byrne. Okay, so the, I just have one more question for you, and it's about our time touring together and playing shows. We've done a, a lot of shows together and a few tours, and I was just wondering if you had one specific memory that stood out as a really, you know, a special moment or like a fun night um, that you could share with us. Well, certainly uh, you and I winding up at the gay bar in, uh, in New Orleans that had the leather store in, in the bar and closing out the bar with the owners yes. in New Orleans was ridiculous our whole new orleans experience was oh ridiculous God. just Always. right but that was that was super fun just being just being queer people you and me just going out alone and, and just yeah, going into this so weird little bar and just making such good friends with these people instantly yeah. and and somehow at four in the morning buying leather and jock straps and you know yeah 
it, it, it's just that way sometimes and apparently i think all i think all gay bars should have uh leather stores in them i think that's a fine I'm idea sure and then Dangerous. honest another wonderful memory that i really cherish is playing for your parents um it was I remember, I, I think we were, we all, you know, we all had gotten so close on that tour and I think yeah. we were all feeling just sort of, not trepidation, but just, you know, we loved you and we, we yeah. believe in you. And I know that it, it's, um, it was wonderful to have your parents there engaging with your music. And honestly, and there were, there was, a, and there were, there were other nights. I think there was a night where a trans woman came up to me after one of the shows and you had played the other boys and she said to me she's like oh my god that song oh my god that song is just i i thank you so much for playing that oh. song because you know even though our the way we you and i look at life is somewhat different there's a lot that brings us together and that song in particular and i is just so it transcends gender it transcends sexuality it's just it's it's really there's a very singular experience of assigned male people that you capture there and it just the fact that it resonated with that person made the whole tour just worth doing honestly yeah. just that little bit knowing that i that me being on stage singing that song with you it was it was a beautiful moment yeah that's a really beautiful moment mm -hmm. song about being in Brooklyn on Valentine's Day and not quite sure what you're doing. <laughs> it's called Sweetheart of Mine. It's snowing in the subway station, Valentine's anticipation, what I'm feeling I just can't define. Thanks so much for watching and thank you to my guests Mia and Karen for being here. Remember, don't be normal because normal is boring. See you next time. Am I going to want to put out a murder ballad? Probably. Mm -hmm. but... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I heard people are doing like um, Zoom first dates. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I saw, I think I just saw it on TV or something, or somebody told me about it. Um, but yeah, they'll just like Tinder match and then be like, okay, we're gonna like cook by ourselves. And... That sounds exhausting. It sounds, yes, exhausting. And imagine like you could see if it's like not what you're expecting, you just to pop on, you're like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Like shortest Zoom date ever. <laughs> my connection is. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, I can't. I can't see you. What? <laughs> <laughs> like I talk to people a lot, but like I, I'm not gonna see anybody in real life, and nobody's gonna touch me. And you know, I live by myself, and I don't. I mean, I don't know. How important is it to have someone touch you? Um, I think it's important. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it is. I mean, but you need to make a you need to make a record. Yeah, make a record. <laughs> get in there. I know you can. <laughs> get it. Get it out there. I'm like, oh, I 